What's up guys, this is Mike Loris, going to be casting the secondary game that Liquid and Fnatic are going to be playing, I guess is the best way to put it. This is going to be from the Nexon Invitational Super 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 Match, and Liquid versus Fnatic definitely, well so far there's only been three teams playing, so I don't really know what's been the deal with that, but Fnatic uh, have been dominating underrated, as have Liquid. And uh, in game number one, Fnatic took it over Liquid, so we'll see if Liquid could rally and you know take their game back bring it even to a 1-1, uh, but yeah, this is probably going to be, I mean, not probably going to be, this is definitely going to be the highest skilled uh, matchup that we're going to see in this tournament. Liquid and Fnatic, they've, they're no strangers to one another, they run into each other all the friggin' time in pretty much all the European slash North American tournaments ever, because they're just such big names, they're two of the biggest teams in the scene right now. And uh, we'll see how they do in the uh, Korean fighting grounds, Liquid going to be picking up a Visage after banning out the Life Stealer as well as that Lich and Fnatic going to be picking up the Naga Siren support first <laughs> no more funny business Naga Siren support first against the Elder t uh, and the with the Elder Titan as well as the Bat Rider bans out okay, so far Liquid and Fnatic haven't really been challenged that much and by that much I mean at all by underrated I don't know who the other Korean teams are that are going to that are going to be participating but uh, Looking forward to seeing who they actually are. If there's if there's a Chinese team, that'll blow my friggin' mind. That would be interesting to see. But yeah, as of right now, it's just gonna be who could win this, uh, who could win the game that is at hand. And well, both teams opting for what I would say two of the strongest support heroes in the game right now. Visage got hit with a little bit of a nerf stick with the reduction of his magic resistance, but you can see he had no effect on his popularity, being picked up in. I believe every single game played in this tournament so far, it was only six games, so I should be able to remember. And I think that is the case. The, the amount of damage you can put out with the Soul Assumption is just insane. And it has very low cooldown as well, so you could even get two of them off. And then you have twice the insane damage. And look, we're going to uh, support that Visage pick with the Doom pick. So they have a little bit of flexibility with this. I mean, always with the first two picks, you're not really locking yourself into anything as of yet, but Doombringer is going to give them a pretty good lockdown spell against whoever Fnatic is going to pick as probably the hero for Hani. Once you slap a Doom onto the you know, common mid lane heroes, if it's not something like a Dragonite, then that hero is just forced to run. They really can't do anything to contribute at all. There's going to be no winning rifts, no screams of pain, or any of that jazzy goodness. So look, we're going to take up Doom very, very quickly as a hero that I personally believe is utter garbage, but that's just because I do not enjoy playing him. When you have a team that can coordinate around you and you actually are capable of last hitting creeps, yeah, he gets pretty good. It's because of the fact that he pretty much has a Grievous Greed that, although it does cost mana, it uh, gives you added benefits. It's not just a passive that sits there and adds to your bank account. Oh, here we go. Fnatic again. He's gonna do the exact same thing. I mean, with the .79 patch, a new hero has kind of arisen as a first ban uh, as first ban material and that is the lich and of course that means the wisp is you know slowly starting to slip by there and fanatic they picked in their first game versus team liquid partnered the wisp up with a tiny and they won so it worked the tiny got really big and liquid with their anti mage pick was not nearly strong enough to deal with that we'll see what they want to do this time they have run that tiny the same tiny pick versus underrated and they've also run the uh, a Ricky pick versus underrated but Fnatic have their options way open and it's just a matter of preference I guess at this point there's really not any firm direction as to which one is stronger one way or another uh, maybe well I don't know I guess an argument can be made for the fact that Doom's on the field so you probably don't want to take a Ricky who will probably not have the best time against Doom both Tiny as well uh, I guess CK would be the best at that then because you'll be able to Phantasm out, and then Doom would have to spend that additional Five second or two remaining. figuring out which Phantasm Illusion is real before actually casting that Doom. And at that okay. point, he's probably already casted the Doom on someone else. So I think that would probably be the best bet for Fnatic. But uh, they've run the Wisp in a variety of ways. Last time, they ran it in a dual lane mid against Liquid. And although uh, I think it was TC with the Dragonite, did pretty well to hold on. It, uh, it, it worked. It worked. Let's just say it worked. Because levels came up for the Tiny gold count for the tiny and then once the relocation started coming in I mean liquid they were kind of rallying in the mid game 
but uh, ultimately the carry potential of Wisp Tiny was just way too much for them. Uh, doesn't look like they have anything to specifically deal with that right now. They're instead, Team Liquid, going to fo be focusing on banning out some of the more side utility heroes. Bounty Hunter, a fantastic hero to partner with the Wisp, not as a tether partner, but as a uh, kind of like a third party kind of thing, where you have the Bounty Hunter walking around looking for targets, you have him pop out, land a track, and with a relocate, that is guaranteed free gold. And it's basically just a scouting unit for the Wisp. Team Liquid probably are going to look to ban out the Nature Prophet just because it's Fnatic. No, they're going to opt for a Queen of Pain ban instead. Just looking to lock down some of Fnatic's lanes. Fnatic kind of wanted, wanting to do the same thing, seeing TC's Luna in the other games, as well as the fact that OD is OD, warranting those bans. Who would probably be one of Liquid's best bets with dealing with a dual lane mid, if of course Fnatic do decide to go down that route. Well, we will have to see because, first of all, it depends on what Liquid pick up to determine whether or not Fnatic even want to get one of those, you know, quote unquote big uh, lane partners with Wisp. They might just want to have that hero as a utility hero because No Tail's been playing it incredibly well, just keeping heroes alive, whereas ordinarily they would have been dead a long time ago. I mean, there's, of course, not much of a reason to not go for something like a CK or Tiny, uh, but the pick to determine which one exactly is the best one, uh, well, that'll determine on what Liquid pick up, and they're going to pick up a Timbersaw. So right now, Liquid, not really locking themselves into anything just yet. Doom probably going to be kind of a safe lane slash jungling farmer kind of thing. I would probably say T uh, not TC, uh, Timbersaw is going to be heading towards the mid lane in that case. Up against a dual lane, that's probably when Timbersaw is, uh, I don't want to say at his best because he's still very vulnerable, but he's very capable of surviving that with the reactive armor. And typically, the heroes that partner off with the Wisp, uh, with, except for the Tiny, are re heavy re heavily reliant on their physical right clicks in order to actually do the damage. I mean, that's the idea. You get the overcharge with the Wisp as well as the Tether, so you could actually deal those right clicks. And then at that point, the armor is going to at least help save Timbersaw. But Fnatic instead, you're going to go for the Nature Prophet. I've seen this game before. I think I have. I think this is a rerun. At least uh, at least half of my screen is a rerun because it's going to be Trixie's Nature's Prophet once again. I talked about it before and I don't really know what else I could say about it. It's a very annoying hero and it will open the door for a lot of split pushing, which is something that prevented Liquid from really ending the game in the first game that they played against Fnatic. I mean, they had constantly a couple heroes in lane, but with Nature Prophet in their... I remember specifically there was a time when Nature Prophet was on the top lane of Liquid, and a Wisp Tiny was on the bottom lane, beating down tier 3s, and Liquid were forced to back off from having 4 or 5 heroes in the mid lane, because they couldn't outrace the Tiny Wisp. And that's just something that they have to deal with when there's Nature Prophet as well as Wisp on the field is that split pushing is going to be one of your greatest threats. When you have a Doom and you have a Mirana though, things kind of get a little bit easier. Arrow is a fantastic uh, tool, it's a little bit of a risky tool, but if you land it, then you know, hallelujah, it's probably going to result in a couple kills. And there we go. I've definitely seen this game before, guys. This is a rerun. Team Liquid with that Mirana pick though, uh, they're probably going to run this as, as a supporty hero. Team Liquid, they don't really have what I would call a dedicated hard carry. Doombringer can do a lot of damage, but he's probably not going to out-carry a Tiny. Timbersaw is going to do a lot of damage, but not a right click of the right-click kind, so come late game, he will fall off. Mirana could do a little bit of damage in the late game, but uh, it's really all about the mid-game ganking for her. So Liquid, they're probably going to look for a very mid-game power play, very, very mid-game heavy power play, in which they use the... Uh, spells from Mirana, Timbersaw, as well as the Doombringer, as well as the, you know, kind of accelerated farm of Doombringer, to kind of overpower Fnatic, because though Tiny is strong, uh, if you could somehow mitigate his Avalanche Toss, or at least punish him for Avalanche Tossing your ally by killing him or weakening him substantially, then he's, although he's a very, very potent mid-game hero, uh, he's not really going to be doing that much, and if he's not going to be doing that much, that means the Wisp is not going to be doing that much. So Liquid are going to look to overpower Fnatic in the mid-game, because come late game, it's probably not going to work out for them. Liquid going to try to help their cause as much as they can in doing that by banning out one of the heroes that, well, I mean, he's a pretty damn good hero that just keeps pace of the game. It's the Viper. It's very hard to be aggressive in the mid lane in the mid game if your lanes are crushed in the early game. And what's the best hero to crush a lane? I would say it's Viper. Fnatic do still need a mid lane hero if not... Uh, if they're not going to run a dual lane there. 
They do still need a hero for Hani. So, Queen of Pain banned out. Puck might be an option. Put that guy on the bottom lane solo. It would be what they did against uh, Underrated, and it didn't really work, but it's still a good idea, I guess. Team Liquid going to get the Alchemist banned out from them. I mean, Doom could certainly be played as more of a support-oriented guy, just doing mostly pulling and stuff like that. So Team Liquid could still be looking for a hard carry, though at that point their lineup will be incredibly greedy. I'm assuming Timbersaw mid at this point, by the way. Um, their lineup will be incredibly greedy with Doom, Timbersaw, Marana, and then whoever hard carry they decide to pick up, all being heavily reliant on levels. They're going to go with a Windrunner, and I actually kind of do like this pick. Their stun lineup so far is incredibly light, and they really do need a little bit more stunning action to deal with someone like an HH Prophet and you know Wisp Tiny. They're usually together, so Shackle Shot should, in theory, be easier. So Windrunner is kind of a good pick in that regard. It will probably... I don't know, the lanes from Liquid are looking awfully weird. They have a lot of flexibility in these lanes, so really it comes down to this last pick from Fnatic, but I think this last pick from Fnatic will ultimately decide Liquid's lanes in that uh, they'll be able to guess where the tiny where the tiny wisps are going. Nature Prophet, you kind of assume, is going towards the top lane. It's kind of what he does, the hero, and then jungles. But Naga Siren and then someone is going to be that uh, final combination. But Liquid definitely uh, keeping in line with their power play. Wow, it's an Invoker! I love seeing Invoker! I'm glad. I'm glad. Now the next big question for this Invoker is Exhort build or Wex build? And uh, while I have been seeing a couple more Wex builds pop up, uh, so I think maybe popularity might just dictate the answer is Wex. Um, I think this game it's actually an Exhort game. Well, no, I changed my mind. It's a Wex game. <laughs> I changed my mind, guys. It's a Wex game. Because usually with Exhort, at least the way I want to think of it, is that if you have a lot of stun and the enemies don't have a lot of mobility, you get Exhort. Because that means that your Invoker could chill, he could get Sun Strikes everywhere. And uh, if you look at Fnatic's lineup, they have Toss, Avalanche. I mean, that's a lot of that's a good tool for keeping heroes in one place so that the Sun can actually focus its strike. You have Sprout, kind of the same thing, and you have Flies, uh, flies and Snare. That being said, however. Liquid have Marana Leap, they have Wind Run, and they have Timber Chain, making it very difficult for Exhort to really get there. And also, if you look at Liquid's lineup, you have Doombringer, you have Marana, both of these heroes, and, and Timbersaw, both of these heroes right off the bat are very, very reliant on their mana pools. And if you're going for Wex, if you're going for Wex, then you'll have access to that EMP, and then, you know, Liquid's lineup with no mana is a very, very sad lineup indeed. So the utility might be something that Fnatic is going to want to focus on, but we'll see how he wants to build it. First of all, going for Exhort, this does not necessarily dictate an Exhort build. It just dictates he's going to get at least one point in Sunstrike. I think the fact, though, that he's heading towards the bot lane, kind of uh, reinforcing the fact that he will go for Exhort, because usually in the mid lane, with the uh, you could go for Exhort, but uh, Wex is a little bit more desirable because you'll be able to run to the other lanes, whereas on the bottom lane, you won't be able to run anywhere really quickly at all. So, Hani's going to be playing that Invoker on the bot lane, looking to Sun Strike and help out his allies. Trixie, what a, what a surprise, is going to be on the Nature's Prophet. No Tail, what a surprise, is going to be on the Wisp. Yura is going to be the Tiny, and Fly is the Naga Siren. On Liquid side, we have TC, generally the uh, very hard carry player for Liquid. It's going to be on that Marana. Koikva is on the Windrunner. Purchase nothing? Purchase something, there we go. Bulba is on the Timbersaw in the mid lane. Way 2 is going to be on the 4 position Doom. And last but not least, that leaves Fluff and Stuff on his visage. The battle begins. So Doom is definitely going to be very focused on uh, trying to stay in the jungle. Fortunately for him, he doesn't have any armor. So jungling with the Doombringer is always a little bit risky, although I don't think Fnatic are going to be looking towards any aggression in the jungle because well, they have Ira and No-Tail in the middle lane, and if they're missing, then it's very easy for Liquid to realize what's going on. But it's going to be a dual lane mid versus Bulba. This is going to be a little bit taxing on Bulba, but he does have that one point in reactive armor, and it is already starting to stack up. So he will get the regeneration. He will be able to survive avalanche toss combos in the early stage. He will not thrive in this lane, I don't think. You can see No-Tail being awfully persistent at poking at him. But, of course, it remains to be seen. Fluff and stuff is going to remain invisible on this top lane. Trixie, though, playing things very, very safely. Does not see the Visage. Not going to take any chances at all. Fluff and stuff probably just going to poke at him a little bit. Oh, the Grave Chill is there. Trixie is going to take a good amount of damage from these creeps. 
plus 11 stuff to increase attack speed, dropping all the way down to half HP. Not bad for an invisibility rune with no support. Now in the bottom lane we have Koikva, going to be handling this lane solo versus Hani, who, well we'll see what he wants to go for. Fly is here as well, so it is a 1v2 lane. Ensnare into a Sun Strike, and really it doesn't matter what Windrunner has, because that's pure damage that Windrunner, quite frankly, cannot deal with. Alright, here we go. Skipping through all this stuff because we can. And here we go. Mid lane, in a little bit of trouble. Bulba got Avalanche, and well, there it is right now. Tether has already slowed him down. The right clicks, will it be enough? He does have that reactive armor. He will pop the salve. It will be instantly cancelled, but it will be enough to save him. You're taking a little bit of damage on the way out as well, and Bulba will survive that one. Meantime, the, the bottom lane, the top lane rather, Trixie, narrowly dodging an arrow from TC that will keep him alive, at least for now. You can see already, very aggressive pushing from Fluff and Stuff as well as TC, who are going to be forced to tank the tower shots. Wow, Fluff and Stuff dropping very, very low from that one. And of course, I missed the freaking first blood as I freaking... Ugh, God. No, no. Okay, we're no. That's not that's not good. I mean, I thought Bulba would just play far back and be fine, but apparently, apparently he decides to die because Sunstrike, that's why. Oh my God, okay. Sunstrike and then Wisp Spirits. Well, can you blame me for that? Can you, can you really? I don't know if you can, because that was, he wasn't close to anyone. And like, here, here's how you do it, right? So you look at the mini-map and the health bars, and you're like, well, if you see the colors starting to come together, then that's where you put the camera. But the colors didn't come together, because Sunstripe, because Toss, because Spirits, those really far, long-range spells, so that's going to be my excuse for that one, guys. Man, two missed first bloods in a row. Really? Are you kidding me? I got to get my act together. Hey, Strewn, onto Fluff and stuff. TC's gonna leap forward, gonna land an arrow as well. They're gonna layer this crowd control just a little bit. Trixie gonna try to teleport out. Will they have enough damage? They will not! Trixie just barely getting out of there. Uh, I don't think the layering of the slow stun really mattered in that case, but still, it is Nature's Prophet getting out of there alive. And, you know, just barely at that. That would have been a very, very nice kill for Liquid to have, kind of equalizing their death on the bottom lane. But unfortunately for them, I mean, Nature Prophet, very, very quick on the teleportation. Now, Koikva might be in a little trouble. No, no ensnared just yet from the uh, Naga Siren. And Invoker is going to invest heavily into this Exhort build. Two points into Exhort, one into Invoke. And looks like with the Gloves of Haste, it could be a Midas build. Why not? Invoker is one of the heroes that ordinarily you would think it's kind of weird for him to go to Midas, but he will go for it. Bulba going to get Avalanche Toss in the mid lane. But look at the tankiness from this hero. Two points of reactive armor, two points of whirling death, really forcing them back off of Mira, taking more damage from that, I would say, than Timbersaw. Especially now with Timbersaw and his bottle, though no tail is a bottle of his own. So this aggression will continue in this middle lane. It certainly will, but uh, so far it looks like Fnatic are getting quite the edge in farm. Trixie not really having the best of times, but Invoker having a very good time, as is Tiny. And Liquid, TC's up there, way too, getting a good amount of farm as well. Doom, though, I wouldn't say is the fastest of junglers. And it's always a little bit risky to jungle Doom just because he's forced to tank the creeps himself. So far, we've only seen one Sun Strike from Hani. Looking forward to see a couple more of those. Hopefully, they won't result in missed friggin' first bloods. Koikva is going to try to mess with the creep pulling as much as possible while Fly is away. Checking out the rune. It's going to be an invisibility rune for him. If he catches, if he holds it, will he hold it? Yeah, he'll hold it for his team. No, he won't. He's going to grab an invisibility rune. He's going to go look towards the mid lane. Bulba has only one point in Timber Chain. That won't be enough to bail him out. Although he does have Visage coming in to support. Sunstrike should be armed fairly certain, fairly soon. Fly He's going to throw the net. Sunstrike instantly onto Bulba. Kaboom goes the Timber Saw. That is an effective gank. In snare into the sun strike. I think, I think the sun strike even came first. Now Fluff and stuff. Wow, even taking a good amount of damage. Fortunately for him, sun strike already used. But fly with very easy rotation with that invisibility rune, punishing the fact that Bulba was in the lane at all. Era was there with his avalanche toss combo and just a whole mess of unhappy things to befall the likes of Bulba. And Hani just securing more and more assists from this bottom lane teleportation, Oof, being feigned by Trixie, just trying to scare Koikva. It'll be really hard to kill this Windrunner, though with Cold Snap and a Sun Strike armed and ready, I do think it's very possible if Trixie just decides to get behind Koikva, and if he manages to Sprout her, though good luck doing that with a Power Shot, so it's really going to matter when Trixie decides to teleport in, if at all. 
But yeah, way too definitely being that uh, currently sitting X factor for Liquid. They're handling their lanes pretty decently. TC is 26 for 2. Looks like he's going to open up with a Ring of Health. That could just be a casual Ring of Health until he looks to get some sort of other item. Or could be a Lincoln Sphere, which won't help him that much. Help him versus Ensnare versus Cold Snap. That's pretty much it. I don't think it's going to be a real uh, Perseverance item, though it might be. It might be. It's probably going to head towards a Yasha, I would say. And running a Mirana as a primary farmer, you kind of want to get that just to be mobile and really punish whoever happens to be in your lane. Bahani's still farming up. Does he have his hand in Midas yet? Nothing on the courier. He's 300 off from it if he does go for that. Koikva as well as Fluff and stuff. Both smoked up. They're going to secure the rune for Bulba, who does not have his bottle on him right now, unfortunately. But they're going to go hunting. Here we go. They're going to look towards the bottom lane where Hani and Fly are both here. Looks like Fly is going to be the one to dispel, dispel the smoke. Bulba has quite a few levels. There is a Centuar drop. Fluff and stuff is going to reveal himself as is Bulba. There's his ice wall instantly. Hani is not going to get shackled to anything. Grave chill as well. Power shot, though, and the soul assumption will be enough to kill off the invoker. Ice Wall not doing nearly enough to slow down the advance of a hasted Timber Saw. And Liquid finally get on the board after taking down two deaths. But uh, yeah, first rotation gank from the Timber Saw, rather effective I would say. Going for a little bit more of a defensive build, but still the damage from the Timber Saw with the pure damage. With the haste rune to help, not, it's always a good thing to have. Is going to help him, uh, help his team at least, to get uh, a little bit more control over this bottom lane where Invoker has kind of been out of control farming. And Invoker getting that much farm, definitely not what you want. Fortunately for Liquid, kind of a double layer of fortunate things to happen for Liquid. Is that they caught Invoker and they killed him. Right when he was at, I think, 1200-ish gold. He was so very close to finishing up his Midas. And at this point, it's, is it even worth it for him to continue doing that? On the top lane, Trixie can take a Doom straight to the face. TC does not have mana for an arrow. Way too going to continue chasing this one out. Just needs one right click to seal the deal with the Doom. He's going to stop and eat a creep and then continue chasing. Looks like Trixie might survive. It's going to be way close than he would really like it to be. But, wow, he's going to survive. 34 HP. First rotation out of the jungle from way too, and it's just not enough. I think he was a little bit strapped for mana. If he had Scorched Earth, he would have been able to chase the Nature Prof down and get that one last, the one right click that he really needed. And that would have, of course, led to a kill. Taking a look back at this middle lane, Era, 49 for 13, getting so much farm out of this lane. Level 6 as well, whereas Bulba just, I mean, he's level 7, which is, you know, it's pretty good, but Era is level 6 with another hero in his lane at level 6. There's a lot more experience, a lot more gold going into this Tiny's pocket than the Timbers, than, uh, than the Timbersaw, at least, uh, you know, as far as the lanes are concerned. No Tail and Era, where are they going? Where are you guys going? Nowhere, okay. But yeah. That, what I mean is that Era and No Tail are splitting experience, but they're still just as just as leveled, if not more so, in total experience than the Timber Saw. In case that wasn't clear, which I realized it probably wasn't. TC poking back Trixie quite a bit. He's he does have the phase boots, so his damage is now quite up there. But really, all fanatic, they're just farming up for now. As far as late games are concerned, I said it before, Liquid can look to be very aggressive in the mid game. Use the spells, use the soul assumption power, use the power of the timber saw. But Fnatic, they're okay with this game going long, because the longer it gets, the more usage that Hani's going to get out of his hand of Midas. And then, of course, they, the liquid side is going to have to deal with a relocating tiny with Aghanim Scepter, which I'm sure is inevitably going to come up. So, Liquid, are they going to be aggressive again? Looks like they grouped for a smoke, but they're actually not just yet. Liquid being a little bit passive at the moment. They definitely don't have many great opportunities to go for the ganks. I mean, TC is farming up an absolute storm. Most gold, most EXP per minute on the on the map. Gold per minute, not quite there, however. Liquid just waiting for a couple items. Quite for getting a good amount of farm in the spot lane, even. Though, struggling a little bit versus Hani. It's kind of hard to la outlast it in Exhort Invoker. Especially as a Windrunner. Radiance top tower is under attack. Fnatic. Trixie is rotated out of the top lane. You can leave TC up there to his own devices. And ordinarily, you would say you don't leave TC to his own devices, but as a Mirana, I'm sure Fnatic is kind of okay with having that Mirana there and just doing nothing but farming. Because that means that she's not on the spot lane, and 
Looks like there's going to be blood in the spot lane. Shackle's going to latch onto Hani. Beautiful Shackle, but instantly the relocation comes in. Hani, can he get killed before he gets anything off? No, he will not. He'll get a Sun Strike. He will get picked off in the end, but at what cost? Boba as well as Way2 both walking through that ice wall. The invisibility is there. Liquid is, wow, Fluff and Stuff dodging that ensnare. That was pretty fortunate. Arrow's going to come through onto Era. Right clicks are there as well. Chakram is going to get set up, and he's going to take so much damage. The, yes, it will be enough to kill him off. Avalanche toss on the, wow. Oh my god, Marana as well as Doom. Both getting blown up by the Wisp of all people. Triple kill on him. Bulba now getting sprouted up. Fly. Does he have anything else? He does have enough for an ensnare. He's going to try to get in the way of Bulba, but he does have a Timber Chain. Making it very difficult for him to follow through. Sun Strike. Is that enough? 287? No, it's not enough. Wow, the Avalanche Toss and the Wisp Spirits. Just so much friggin' damage onto the Doombringer, who already doesn't have much armor. And just a couple right clicks to finish it all off, and... Damage happening so quickly at one time. Even I froze up. Five to four is the score thus far. Pretty crushing team fight. Unfortunately for Liquid, they didn't have enough uh, actual damage to burst down this Invoker before he got anything off. Getting the Sun Strike, getting the Ice Wall off. Both of those. I think he also might have gotten a Cold Snap off as well. Yeah, but he, he got a lot of spells off before he went down. And that was supposed to be Liquid taking an instant pick in that fight. And then making it making it a 5v4. Whereas essentially it was a full on 5v5, because the invoker actually contributed everything that he possibly could before he went down. So a little bit unfortunate for Liquid, but that's kind of the fact that uh, Timbersaw getting not as much as the Tiny in the lane, comparatively, not as much in the mid lane as the Fnatic team is getting in the mid lane, and bottom lane, relocation, quick, but you know, try for a shackle, we'll latch it onto No Tail. But Avalanche Toss is just way too much damage, and now with Forge Spirits up on Fani, this tower is not long for life. Split push, be damned. Trixie's out on his uh, on his own, doing his own thing. Relocate out though, and here we have Timbersaw moving in along with two teleportations. Hani as well as Fly, though, will get out of here at least for now. Yeah, Bulba is gonna get slept as well. Stun one onto Fly, stun two onto Fly. Bulba's gonna cut through. Arrow's gonna fly, and it will latch onto Fly. Beautiful arrow from TC. That's going to allow for Timbersaw to clean up from there. But in the meantime, Ira and No-Tail taking down the mid-tier 1 tower. But it's not over just yet. Hani still being chased down by this Timbersaw. That minus armor really wrecking him. And Avalanche Toss wrecking him even more. Doom now onto Hani as he tries to juke around in the jungle. The rest of the team isn't there. They're instead focusing on someone else. Arrow's going to land as well as the Soul Assumption. Liquid Fluff going to find that kill. And 7 to 6. Liquid trading kills so far. Can they get a tower out of this? They have to leave actually right now. Era going to get a little bit of support from No Tail. Shackle not going to latch. The Familiar is doing a lot of damage. Power Shot as well. Soul Assumption will not do enough to finish him off. The right clicks will be enough. It will not. No Tail with so much regeneration. Now they're going to turn this one around. Way too going to get sprouted. And TC is going to get ensnared. Avalanche Toss will kill off the Windrunner now. TC instead doesn't have the mana to leap. Doesn't have anything. He's going to go down. Fnatic have taken four kills. They're looking for the fifth, but they're not going to find it. They're going to take a 10 to 6 kill advantage Liquid. They should have just booked it out of there once they got that Invoker trade with the Timber Saw. But uh, sticking around for a little bit too long didn't really calculate the amount of damage that a Tiny Wisp can actually put out. And got a hand to Fnatic. They layered their stuns absolutely perfectly. Like you would think Fly would. Uh, well, he threw the Ensnare all the way on the Marana, who was kind of on the other side of the fight. That was Im some impressive restraint from him in holding off on that spell, knowing that uh, the, I believe, Doombringer was already dead. Or, no, uh, the Windrunner was already dead, so, you know, no point wasting an ensnare on a dead target. 10-6 now, Fnatic looking to make a repeat of game number one. You can see the gold earned experience earned starting to bend up towards their favor as Ira is starting to slowly head towards that Aghanim Scepter. Once he gets that, the right-click damage is going to be even more fearsome than it is now. I mean, already it's pretty friggin' deadly. But Tiny, I mean, so far he's just been contributing with his Avalanche Toss, and that's all he's needed to contribute. Sometimes in games, that's enough, and this happens in one of those games, because Liquid, right now, they're still heavily reliant on their spells, which means they can't really stick and fight. They have to kind of get in, you know, try to get a kill, then back off, wait for cooldowns, wait for mana regen, because really their right click is supposed to be TC. Like, in any other game, it's supposed to be TC, but... In this particular game, Murano with Perseverance and Phase Boots, he's not going to be doing anything, especially when you compare that to Tiny, who's hitting for 214 damage a pop. That's not that's not fun. That's definitely not fun. Fnatic, do they have two hands of Midas? They, yes, they do. Of course they do. Midas Gaming. And now they're going to go for a bottom lane push. Liquid is here with power shots from Koikova. 
but the Forge Spirits will force Bulba off. Chakram kind of doing the same thing, but this tower is being worked down by Ira. If he gets the last hit on this, it should give him very close to enough to... There it is. He does get it, and it will give him just enough to get that Blades of Alacrity. Aghanim Scepter completed on Tiny. He's going to teleport back and complete that item. The tree is up, and the cleaves will be there. Liquid, though, looking to make it, that tower loss a trade. Are they? No, they're not. Fluff and stuff going to fall back, and really, there's not enough heroes to do this, although the tower is very low, so they might get, just get it in the end. Fortification is available, so I think Fnatic are looking for a tower deny, and they're probably going to get it as well. Although, they're not going to get it. 18, uh, 182 HP on the tower, keeping it just above that deny range. Gotta keep my eye on No-Tail as well. <laughs> Gotta keep my eye on No-Tail as well as Ira. They're gonna clear off a double stack of Ancients, or at least Ira is. To try to get more and more farm. Mantis will probably be his next item choice. In the meantime, Liquid actually gonna return to the top lane, force out the fortification, and uh, well, the tower is not gonna be in denial range just yet. Still 154 HP. Are Fnatic baiting Liquid into taking this? Invoker is on the bottom lane still, going for an Orchid, but and just because he's on the bottom lane doesn't mean that the Sunstrike is not on the top lane. He could easily contribute a great deal to that fight if set up by Fly. In the meantime, Ira and No-Tail going to push down the mid lane. Not exactly the split pushing that I was thinking of. Invoker on one end and Tiny Wisp on another. But hey, whatever works, works. They're forcing Liquid from taking this very easy to acquire, I mean, you know, kind of easy to acquire tower being so low on HP just by simply being in other lanes and that's how Fnatic likes to play, that's how they're effective at playing, and certainly showing right now, Liquid have got to fall back from that one. This is going to give TC a little more time to farm, but it's a Marana getting a little more time to farm. Is that really going to be enough to bail them out, for, bail them out from two hands of Midas? Uh, 6,000 gold, 5,000 experience deficit? I don't know, it's, it's going to be close at the very least, but... Yeah, the big items are starting to come up, and with two hands of Midas, Liquid... Their power, their, the point in the game where they're the most powerful is slowly disappearing. The mid game, which should be right now, they should be grouped up, they should be trying to take big fights and use the fact that they have Doom, use the fact that they have a, a Timber Saw just to go around and get picks. That's not happening. Fnatic, they're poking and prodding, they're staying away from Liquid, except for right now where Trixie and Fly are going to look towards killing off Mirana, but Mirana sees it coming a mile away. Observer Ward is going to catch wind of this. Yeah, and TC is going to play it a little bit smartly. He's not going to get caught out. However, he does still have to worry about No Tail and Era. If he leaps, then the relocation will come immediately. No Tail and Era just still doing their own thing, clearing off double stacks. So much money in Era's bank account. My god, this guy's loaded. There we go. TC going to leap and use invisibility. Do they have any true sight? Looks like it might not even matter if they have true sight. They do in any way. So, in the end, it didn't matter. I think with Sunstrike, Avalanche tossing up a Wisp right in the air, that would have done more than enough to kill off that Marana. And with that Marana dead, it's going to open up the opportunity for taking down this top tier 2 tower. And no Marana means no arrow, means no stun from Liquid. I mean, Koikva's stun is there technically, but he's not even there. This tower is not long for life with Ira hitting it for so much damage from Pop. And now Fly can use Song of the Siren. He's not going to catch way too, but they're sure as hell going to catch Bulba. Sunstrike in the lineup perfectly. He's going to Timber Chain out of there. He might survive out of this Doom onto Ira, but that's not really going to do that much. He's already used his Toss, and now Wade, who's going to get his face smashed in by this Tiny. He's actually going to survive a little bit longer than I had thought, but now Ira still doomed up, unable to cast anything. He's going to go down. Liquid so far traded one for one, but everyone from Fnatic, they've got to run. Trixie's going to come in and try to get out, but the arrow is there just in time. It's going to be an, almost a team wipe as Bulba cleans up. Did not go down that fight. Did he really not go down that fight? My god. Sunstruck, but Timber Chain straight to the north, keeping him out of harm's way. And being a Timber Saw with a point booster, magic stick charges, as well as an Ogre Club, yeah, that's going to do it. Unfortunately, Fnatic, that was a 4v5 fight, and that's going to give Liquid a little bit more of an opportunity to come back into this game. Sometimes all you need is a, for a Timber Saw to really flex his muscles in that in a fight, and really, that'll be it. Marana's actually is going to complete Lincoln Sphere. That's kind of a curious item build. I'm not going to question TC, but really, it's not really going to protect him against that many spells. But, you know, to each his own, I suppose. But, yeah, Fnatic taking a 4v5 fight, or, you know, not, the, the point I'm trying to make is Hani wasn't there. If Hani was there, I'm sure Liquid would have been 
in a little bit more trouble that fight. I mean, they took it quite handily, Team Liquid. But, of course, they didn't have to worry about cold snaps. They didn't have to worry about uh, ice walls, forge spirits, any of that extra DPS. Doom on to Tiny. Soon that's not going to be a good thing to do. And now TC in a little trouble will leap away. I just had the sickest sense of deja vu. Sunstrike and a miss. And uh, TC going to turn around. He's going to get a field goal. Unfortunately, that's not really going to help him score any points. Because Avalanche Toss will kill him off. Easy kill on TC. What did his Lincoln Sphere do there? Literally nothing. It actually did nothing. If he had a Yasha for more movement speed, maybe he would have outrun the Tiny? Probably not, because Tether, but... Yeah, I mean, Lincoln Sphere, I, I don't really know about this item. I have to question this item just a little bit. But uh, we'll see if it works out. I'm sure he'll end up saving someone eventually with the new way Lincoln Sphere works, but... It's a peculiar item to be rushing on your hard carry, who so far doesn't do any damage, and I mean, Ira survived for a very long time in that fight, despite the fact that he did have that Doom on him. He wasn't being focused after that, really. But generally, when you Doom someone, you want to either be able to ignore them or focus them down. And you can't do either when you Doom Ira. And he really made Liquid pay for that in that top lane fight. He's gonna get even bigger. Assault Kuras almost done, just a thousand gold away from that. And now the split push from Fnatic is starting to take in, uh, kick into effect. Fnatic do have the Song of the Siren up and available, so if they want to take another team fight, they can do it. It was kind of wonky initiation from Fnatic, just catching Song of the Siren with one. Definitely far from optimal, but hey, uh, it kind of showed. They could try again. They could try again constantly. Though with the Timbersoft BKB, it's going to be a little bit harder. Tiny doesn't really care about BKB because he has 230 damage at pop. He's even going to get stronger once he gets to that level 16 mark. Grow some even bigger muscles, rock muscles or whatever. going to be quite scary for uh, Team Liquid. But right now, Fnatic, they're just going to play it patiently. They have Hands of Midas. They know that Liquid don't really have anyone to transition into that real hard carry role, i.e. Tiny. So Liquid, you know, the burden's on them to actually make a play happen, actually start up with some aggression. But so far, they've just been defending, defending, defending. TC gets caught out defending, defending. That's not a great way to play, especially with the lineup that Liquid have chosen right now. TC might be in a little bit of trouble. Trixie, Shadow Bladed up. Is he going to want to initiate on this? He can't Sprout the Marana, I guess, which is quite annoying. But you can still Sprout the Ground, and that'll trap Marana if you're, if you're accurate. Hani has been farming up a storm. Wow. Blink Dagger, Orchid. Has he left this lane a single time? I don't know if he has. I don't think he has. He's just been pushing this constantly with his Forge Spirits. Getting quite a bit of Exhort, and that Sunstrike is going to be absolutely brutal. Unless it's BKB blocked, but now the Blink Dagger up, Hani might be able to contribute to some fights aside from one spell. Liquid, they're biding their time, but uh, I don't know if it, they're really in a position to be biding their time. Because Ira is really a ticking time bomb. At a certain point, they will not be able to kill this Tiny at all. Like, when Mance style, or when BKB comes up, this Tiny is just going to walk right over Liquid. And Liquid are doing nothing to really stop that at the moment. I mean, they're trying to optimize their farm. They're farming the jungle, or at least they're trying to, without Trixie being a nuisance. They're all grouped up, and they're going to look towards uh, countering this Roshan attempt, it looks like, from Fnatic. They're all grouped up, Fnatic. Hani looking for a blink into probably Forge Spirits, Ice Wall. There you go. Forge Spirits are up, Ice Wall with the blink is there. There you go, right into the Roshan. The Forge Spirits a tank. Hani can even evoke a Cold Snap if he wants to. But Liquid, are they going to go in on this? They don't really have a crushing team fight in the pit, as does uh, Ira. As does Fnatic, rather. Ira going to get caught out, though. A little bit of damage from the Chakram. Doom now onto Hani. Probably the best target to Doom, but. They're just going to walk out of there. No stuns available for Liquid. Marana is uh, unable to, or unable or unwilling to throw that arrow on such a non-guaranteed thing. And now here we go. Song of the Siren. Who does Ira want? He wants Roshan. He wants Way Too. He's going to get bashed. There's the Avalanche toss on Way Too. He does have the Shivas trying to keep him alive. Ira getting shackled to a tree. Bulba's going to go nuts onto everyone. Chakram's going to be there onto Ira. He will not be able to swing anything, although the Wisp keeping him alive. No tail in the back of the Roshan pit. Keeping Ira alive. So much HP on that tiny. He does, in fact, go down, as does Hani. But Trixie, in the end, does pick up that HC Immortal. He will burn it immediately. No tail. Still in the back. Will teleport out. 
and the Nation Prophet probably not going to be as lucky, taking Nairo straight to the face. He will go down as well. Liquid actually win that fight. They do not kill Roshan, I think. Oh, they actually, yeah, Trixie snatched the Aegis, but uh, Liquid actually did kill off Roshan, so they do get the experience from that. They do get the gold from that, and, uh, well, they take a better fight in general. Despite the fact that Tiny was just sitting in there, just hitting everything, the fact that Timbersaw was alive for so long in such close quarters means that the Chakram, the Whirling Death, the Timber Chain, doing pure damage to everyone from Fnatic, along with the fact that Invoker was kind of useless because of Doom for that entire fight. Liquid taking a much better team fight than I really expected them to. Unfortunately for them, they did not get an Aegis to show for it. Doom, though, packing around that uh, Shiva's. Thought he was going to go for an AC, but the minus attack speed definitely hurting the Tiny, who's already kind of struggling with attack speed just as a hero. He has a Hyperstone in the AC to kind of deal with that, as, and he has Overcharge as well. But the Shiva's in those close quarters, combined with the Timber Saw damage, there's a lot more damage output coming from Liquid than I really gave them credit for. And it really showed. I mean, they took a team fight in a pretty convincing fashion, and they're starting to pull this game back. Gold earned is starting to dip only 2,500 in the advantage of Fnatic. Similar things are showing in the EXP graph as well. And Liquid, there they've shown that they're more than capable of taking these fights. Maybe I'm not count. I'm counting Doom out a little bit too quickly. He's doing some pretty sick damage. And the fact that Ira was out of that fight with the shackle shot for pretty much the entire time also helps. I really think Ira needs uh, a BKB. Because once he has that, then Liquid can't do anything. But he's not going for that, at least not clearly, not yet. Fnatic going to fall right back into their pattern of split pushing. No Tail and Ira just going to farm up the jungle constantly while the rest of the heroes kind of do their own thing. Push out some momentum onto this bottom lane. They want this tier 2 bottom lane tower and they should be able to take it, though. They're once again satisfied with just farming it up. And Liquid, they're starting to get some pretty big items up. Hex is almost up on Koikva. And if he gets that before the BKB comes up on Tiny, that'll be even more devastating. I mean, 3.75 seconds of stun is crazy enough. Add a Hex on top of that, and this Tiny's not going to be contributing anything to these fights. So Koikva's well on his way towards that. Rana going to go for the Glass Cannon item in the Desolator. I say that, <laughs> it sounds kind of bad the way I say it, but that's actually like what she needs to do. Liquid need more damage output, at least more constant damage output. They can't always rely on Bulba to just have everyone in such close quarters and to be able to go nuts on everyone. Doom, of course, does have a Shiva's, and Mech is up on Visage, as is a Sanj in production. So Heaven's Halberd is on the way. They're looking to stop this Tiny as much as they can. Of course, all of that will be for nothing if Ira does not pick... Uh, if one Ira picks up his BKB, and level 3 grow as well. 300 damage a pop. Let's go. Meanwhile, we have 200 damage a pop on Marana. Not bad. Not totally bad, but... Definitely not comparable, I'd say. Lots of Fnatic heroes in this top lane. Are they actually looking to break the base? I mean, Hani's keeping people occupied on this bottom lane. Koiko was getting poked back, dropping very low on HP, losing a lot of armor as well. No, Hani's not going to go in on this one. And Hani left the lane, like, once to go to Roshan, and that's pretty much it. Hani's been playing... Is this a Broodmother? Is this a Broodmother in an Invoker disguise? Because it just might be. He really hasn't been doing much outside of this lane. It's really been everyone else on his team, you know, kind of making opportunities for him to use Sunstrike. That's why he doesn't have any kills, because Sunstrike has been used as a uh, tool off of a setup, as opposed to a killing tool. Yera has 2,400 gold. I really think if he doesn't go for a BKB, then that's just going to be unnecessarily, like, putting himself at risk. Although, you know, Marana's getting a Desolator up as well. I don't know. I don't know. I, I think B. Oh, Koikva. Gonna get hexed up immediately by Trixie. Relocate gonna come in as well. Koikva does have a four staff away. Nature Prophet Ultimate gonna snipe her down. Sunstrike even. Would have sealed the deal, I think. That looks like to be on the mark. We'll hit Bulba instead, so value is value. Desolator doing some damage onto No Tail. They will be yanked out. This is the perfect time for Liquid to start a fight on these three remaining heroes. Unfortunately for them, they don't really have any way of getting close enough, so. Fnatic going to find that Windrunner kill. Pretty much Trixie solo. Actually, that was Trixie solo getting that kill. And then they're just going to walk out. Fly going to run headlong into TC as well as Way 2. 
He does have a level 2 Song of the Siren, so they can use this a little bit more liberally now. The cooldown does drastically decrease by a minute each time. That's pretty huge. But Fnatic just trying to extend this game as much as possible. Try to keep Liquid from you know, making a dedicated push or finding a huge, great team fight. Fnatic are playing the very elusive, very slippery role of we're going to find a kill and then back off, find a kill, back off. And it's going to be up to Liquid to really take control of this game, which it looks like they're going to try to do right now. 30 minutes and it strikes. Fortification will slow this push down, but uh, Liquid can't really do this. That's the thing. It's Fnatic split push, it's pretty damn strong. Even Song of the Siren going to be popped by Fly. They don't even have to relocate. This is just like a stalling Song of the Siren. Like, TC might get this tower, which is fantastic, but they lost the tier 3 on top. I wouldn't say that's a good trade. Especially if Hani now does work on TC, relocates coming in. There's the cold snap, and wow, one tree blast from Ira. He can secure the kill on TC. So it's a tier 1 for a tier 3, plus a kill in favor of Fnatic. The split pushing is just too damn strong, I gotta say. When TC down for another minute, Fnatic can push this tier 2, try to force out a buyback, although, oh, no, no tail. Gonna get relocated back, so, you know, acceptable losses. What are you really gonna do about that one? But uh, I would say the Mirana down is a lot more of an important factor than the Wisp down. And Liquid, they're gonna try to defend this tower. Tower shots to be able to thin the creep wave. And the fact that Ira and Hani apparently have better things to do. Well, this tower is gonna remain alive, at least for the moment. So, Fnatic not gonna tempt fate, not really known as a team to tempt fate like that. We'll continue to. Wow, 5,000 friggin' gold, are you kidding me, Hani? Spend it, maybe. It's kind of what it's for. There we go. BKB on Tiny. And now is when Liquid's game gets tough. See, 30 minutes in there, 75 gold behind. Now it's starting to get challenging because what do they have to do with the BKB Tiny? Uh, and I can't really say Doom because Tiny will just hit you. So you can't Avalanche Toss, which is, I guess, annoying, but that's pretty much it. They have a mech for armor. A four staff on Windrunner and a Mirana who could leap away. Or try to fight the tiny. There's really not much that Liquid have, especially with Ira packing around a double damage rune. That is terrifying. That is simply terrifying. Fnatic gonna opt for the 5v5, it looks like. Or I'm pretty sure Ira as well as No Tail is gonna head towards the mid lane and just split push. Because why not? That's what they do, right? Relocate nope, they're gonna relocate straight into the Raxes. Backdoor protection pretty strong though. Ira gonna get hexed up. No tail just abandoning him. Wants to stay alive for that tether back, and he looks like he will get it. Wow, they're even turn gonna turn this around. Boba taking huge damage. Wow, look at that damage. Holy crap. Tiny with the cleaves. Please call police. I agree, man. Well, surprise. Tiny does a lot of damage, and uh BKB not gonna help you versus that. Avalanche toss into getting them into cleave range? That was just perfect from Ira. My god, that was brutal. Now with two down, that's going to allow them to break the base. Alacrity on Tiny as well. Arrow's going to fly, hit onto a Forge Spirit. But the tower goes down, and the Rax is, wow, soon to follow. Ira is hitting like an absolute truck. That's the bottom Rax, and they can even slide up to the top lane and get top Rax as well. Way too's there. But he really can't do anything to defend against this. Necro Book up on the Nature's Prophet. Yeah, the push on the top lane will commence. In the meantime, Ira... You just hit this tower a couple times. Backdoor protection be damned. He has alacrity. Not much attack speed attached to that, but he's taking no damage from this tower, so why the hell not? Liquid, they're really searching for an answer right now, but I think the answer is do something 15 minutes ago. So the answer is a little bit it's a little bit too late for an answer at this point. They will clean off this top lane, but uh, they still do have to worry about Ira, who's uh, farming creeps in the liquid base. Shackle gonna fly, not gonna latch. Hex onto Ira. Is there a doom? Do they want to spend it onto Ira? They're gonna get relocated out. It's probably the worst time to use the song, though. Oh no, they're gonna go relocate to the top lane. Fly, that was just a delay tactic. My god, the tactical relocates. Tactical songs, and now No Tail. Give me the sacrificial lamb once again, but really, they got the, the Rax on the top lane. I thought they teleported back to the base, try to get out of that fight. I was completely wrong. They took top Raxes, they took bottom Raxes. And now it's just a matter of time before mid raxes fall. Liquid, they're starting to run out of answers. They aren't really taking a huge 5v5 team fight. And even if they did, even if they did, I don't know if that would really turn out to be in their favor. They have a huge invoker to worry about. Level 18 on this invoker is terrifying. And they, of course, have Tiny, who now has friggin' crit. 
yeah, he like three shot Windrunner and Timbersaw. It'll be scary to think about what he could do with the crit. That's like one. That's like literally a one shot kill. Relocate onto the tier three towers. They can go straight for TC. No, they're not. They're gonna ignore everyone and start beating down this tower. Creeps are in the base. No backdoor protection. Relocate means 11 seconds for Ira to just go to town. TC getting it hexed up. Avalanche on him as well. Riptide will bring him down. Wisp is gonna return back himself, and Ira is just gonna stay in this fight. No creeps in the, in the lane. No problem. They're gonna bowl down the middle lane now. Net on fluff and stuff. In the meantime. Way too getting harassed by Hani. Did they take down Rashawn? They only brought it down to half. Way too is gonna try to run away, but it won't happen. He's gonna call GG against Mega Creeps. There's really nothing more that Liquid could do. Everyone from Liquid just unable to carry enough weight. I gotta say, Fnatic's lineup was a little bit better than Liquid's. Liquid have a lot of strong heroes individually, but put them all together and they don't have any damage. And the damage they did have is pretty much all through the Timbersaw, all through the Doom and Mirana. Their spells. At 20 minutes and they let that pass them so that's gonna be it guys my apologies for missing the first blood but uh, excuses 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 and excuses so that's gonna be it Wow really look visage didn't die holy god that's impressive I mean they lost but he didn't die not bad fluff not bad but that's gonna be it guys this is day two of this uh, Nexon Invitational uh, is it even a tournament? I don't know. Uh, but we will wait for the next day, and then those games will come out hopefully same day. That's what I'm trying to do, because as I said before, English coverage is behind a paywall, and screw that. You could watch the good caster, uh, and he won't miss first bloods, probably. Or you could not do that and watch me for free. It's your choice. Thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed it, comments, criticism, always appreciated. So let me know what you think about this cast. And that's going to be it. Hope you guys enjoyed. GG.